thank you so much for joining us yet again. Sonko, what do you have for us? Well, this time around when we talk about serving, I don't know how your serving culture is. Uh, uh, I think it is disciplined. disciplined. My serving culture, mm. since I had an interaction with Marcelino here last time, mm. telling me about financial indiscipline and financial discipline, I think I'm improving. Yeah, so I'm improving. I'm crediting myself uh, improving a little bit. Me, I, uh, I apparently accepted that I am financially indisciplined. So I'm going to be working on uh, how I can self-discipline mm -hmm. uh, all my accounts, okay. all my financial statements and my financial uh, abilities. So I want to see how best I can save. Mm -hmm. But saving also takes us back to how much do you, let's say, make before okay. you even save. How much mm. income do, do you, you in, uh, do make? Do you bring a month or do you make a week to start saving? Even on a mm. daily basis, what is your routine to have money, I think? It helps you discover yourself on how actually you're to save. I mean, you said earlier, but to me, that's not again um, an argument here really. I had a discussion or, with my mother when she was telling me, I, I, I asked her, how can I save effectively? She was like, nay and I. This economy here, you can't save. You only work to make okay. sure that you stay happy and healthy. Mm -hmm. So when you look at the situation here, our economy, it's not easy to save money. The money you make is either going to help you in a certain problem or it is just money to eat. Do you believe in Mizimijerik? <laughs> when you talk about, you know, making uh, and sometimes money just disappears, mm. someone would tell you, you know what, go visit, uh, go visit how your judge or ancestors, you know. But away from that, I still believe that even when you are, um, you're having an income of 5,000 a day, you can still make it actually work. Mm. You can still f uh, find a 500 apart from, <laughs> even when you, because now, I mean, the I, if you're living around Kampala, because I am meant to believe that across the country here, the most expensive um, uh, life kind of life is when you're living around the city center. Mm -hmm. uh, that is Kampala and different cities across the country. But those up country, not on so much, you know, emphasis really. Mm -hmm. But if you're living in Kampala and your income is 5,000, now the carrier, luggage carriers, 5,000 a day. Muchikumi, chikumi, food is for 1,000. Transportation taxi, you either walk or use a taxi at 1,000. Then you reach somewhere, you continue with your journey. To me, I still believe that you can save at least 500. Mm. There's also a belief that some people say when you've just touched some money, you've just got some money. Mm. It is when your relatives start getting problems, it's when your friends need money. At a time when you had planned accordingly, Someone else is telling you now, you see, Sonko, let me... A and is it K. necessary for you, Sonko, to give Sometimes out that money? Sometimes you feel like you're supposed to, and you feel touched. In That's way, the problem. Because, uh, you don't have to feel touched all the somewhere. time. Oh. You don't have to feel touched all the time. I mean, all every time um, I'm, I've gotten my money and Sonko is coming out for a borrow or for, you know, a problem, it's not that I, I you know, sometimes you need to react. I mean, in business, you either win or lose it, Sometime. And, and so you have to react and say, you know what, I, I, I may not help you out today. Sometimes lie. Otherwise, it's survival for the fetus at some point. How are you going to survive when your child gets sick, emergency, sickness, and then a friend comes? I mean, whom are you going to consider first? So sometimes it's a consideration point at a point. And uh, all right, and speaking of saving culture, the SMEs have been urged to embrace it with discipline. As the small and medium-sized enterprises have been called upon to develop a saving culture that will enable them to invest and grow their businesses. Uh, speaking of the graduation ceremony of 700 small and medium-sized enterprises, and uh, in the enterprise development, celebrated entrepreneur and chairman Simba Group of Companies, Patrick Bitature, called on young entrepreneurs to be committed and avoid living luxurious life that does not add any value to them. Pedison Mumbere has the details of this report. Scully, uh, please do come to the stage. Business Incubator Limited awarded 700 small and medium enterprises with certificates in enterprise development. This was after three months of training in financial literacy, business planning, contracts and buyer management. Speaking at the ceremony, a celebrated entrepreneur and chairman Simba Group, Patrick Bitature, urged small and medium enterprises to develop a serving culture that will help them invest and grow their businesses other than live Living luxurious life 
that do not add value. Which has Jeff Bezos, but him he can choose what he wants throughout the world. He wants to break down a bridge so that his boat can pass through there. He will break it down and rebuild it just because he wants his yacht to go through there. And what did he do? He did one thing. He built an e-commerce platform to buy anything from anywhere to everywhere. He doesn't manufacture anything. He just buys from you. He sells there. He's got the best logistics to make sure that the goods are delivered to you. And everybody's clapping. You're our man, our man. What about you guys? Wow. Wow. So... Another thing, another flaw why you cannot succeed is because of the economic system. Again, it is designed against you. The economic system today we have that has won the world is capitalism. At one time there was socialism, there was communism. They have largely collapsed, especially when the Berlin Wall went down. Capitalism is a system which is designed largely those who are smart, those who are rich to get richer. If you want to choose which side of the bridge you want to be, the poor on that side, there's a bridge that connects you and the rich on that side. So what we're trying to do is help you to walk that bridge. This incubation center is training you to understand the language of money so that you can come from there to this end. Some of you were born from a poor family and that's not your fault. Your parents were poor. But it doesn't mean you're also going to die poor. You can make a difference. And the biggest thing you have now is age. You are young. You've got time. Use your time well. You can change your life completely. Begin by taking responsibility for your life. Don't blame the government. Don't blame your school. Don't blame your parents. It's up to you. That's where you start. In the last two years, just a minute. In the last two years, COVID wiped off $3.9 trillion. Now, I don't know how to describe the difference between trillion, a million, and a billion for you. But let's assume this is a million dollars. That building compared to my glasses. That's a trillion. The difference is so big. That's the amount of money that was wiped off because of COVID pandemic. People lost that money. Someone must have lost it. Now, if they lost that money, who made it? The top 1% made $3.7 trillion in the last two years. The shipping companies, their rate for a container from China to Uganda to Mombasa was about $2,900, $3,000. It went to $17,000. One of the shipping companies that I know, that I'm close to, in this last one year, made the money they had made in the last nine, nine years, combined in one year. And they say it was supply chain disruption. The rich got richer. That's what has, happens. Jeff Bezos invested $60 billion last year. And he made $200 billion added on his wealth. He made big steps. Maybe Mark Zuckerberg who lost a bit of money in the last one year, but you watch that space. He's going to recover it. The big boys always come out. Big wins, big falls. The price of oil dropped to $40 or $30. Today it's hovering at 90 and they are saying it's going to go to 150 the barrel. Which is good news for us in Uganda. Because we thought we had missed the boat. Now the price of oil is up, everybody's excited. Let's catch it, get in and catch some of this action before it tanks again. Because they're talking about electric vehicles. In 10 years, there should be no more internal combustion engines in Europe. Improving financial literacy and access to bank accounts may help youth save, allowing them to meet current financial needs and invest in their futures. In Uganda, researchers evaluate whether offering financial education or group savings accounts to judge best youth increased savings. Professors have been there, lecturers, PhDs, but who has walked the journey? Tell us. Then they will believe you. That's why I come to talk to young people. I'm not paid to talk to you. I take time to make this video podcast because I can reach many more people trying to share the journey. What did I learn along the way? If you don't save, you're not going anywhere. So saving is very important, the culture of saving, but it requires discipline. I talked to Wazalendo. You probably have heard of that, the biggest circle, one of the biggest circles today, the military police circle. Wazalendo was a small uh, institution and Kaihura had not become the IGP. He invited me to talk to them, the leadership. Today, Wazalendo has got 240 billion shillings. A culture of saving, enforcing it. And with the military, I told them their biggest advantage is the military have got discipline. Order and order, you follow it, this is a decision made. So they had discipline. Look how quickly it's grown. You know, if you can't save, you cannot even do something as we were taught because you have to save however little 
if you are youth, however little you save, it will help you. Because you can't say I don't have the capital, I don't have the money. We know sometimes your parents may give you pocket money. Those small money you may waste on buying maybe airtime for even doing things that are not productive. You can save such small, small money, assuming you're saving like 3000 a day. That is how much a month. Don't look at saving like something so, so that you, I mean, you, you don't have to look at saving like something you're supposed to save much to gain, but you can save little, little, and that little you can invest. Promoting financial literacy and providing access to bank accounts have become popular approaches to help low-income individuals save. Increased savings may also help individuals to meet day-to-day -day financial demands and invest in their futures. Furthermore, increasing the savings rate in the general population may help promote large-scale changes in the country's economy by allowing increased investment in productive resources. Tony Otoa, the chief executive officer of Stand Big Business in Jubeta Limited, said that they are committed to continue on-site mentorship and follow up on the 700 small and medium enterprises who were offered certificates to ensure their business survival and thrive, as well as creating more jobs for them. To uh, manage uh, pretty much operational excellence, putting systems in place, cash flow, uh, networking, markets uh, uh, or, or positioning them for the markets all of that so what we try to do is to expose them get them to know where their potential customers are bring also the potential customers to connect and relate with them but most important of all as well is helping them and supporting them to access funding it's one thing to train and it's another thing to look for money to be able to support your business. So that is what we do for them. The training was conducted under the Enterprise Development Program, which is a stand big business in Jubeta Limited flagship program aimed at enhancing local SMEs capacity building for business resilience and sustainability. Pedson Mumbere, Smart 24 TV. Very well, Pets and Mumber, they are reporting about uh, SMEs to embrace the discipline about financial and also financial orientations around there. But looking out for SMEs, we have got um, a lot of concerns that they always come up with. Let us first now look at SMEs when there is at least a... Uh, well, sorry about that. When there is at least uh, a borrowing that is happening, because government, I mean, finances them from uh, DTB Bank, but on an interest rate. Mm. So you might find that a, a small and medium enterprise is going to get maybe a loan or going to get funds to inject into their respective businesses at a certain interest. Mm. If the uh, interest is not going to be favorable, like at this point, uh, their interest was still at 12% at during COVID-19 revamption, but they're still in discussions on how they're going to be handling about getting money. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, the Ministry of Finance is at the same time borrowing domestically. Mm -hmm. Where uh, does that leave a competition around SMEs? And uh, there is also another challenge that some of them mm -hmm. do not meet uh what the banks normally look out for mm. when they're going to lend out money mm. so when someone goes out to apply for a loan they will look at your business to see whether your business can easily get you the money that you you want mm. in the long run or to even clear off the interest mm. then it also that cuts them down or cuts mm. them off uh, for in uh, terms of acquiring for these loans so the SMEs are also facing that as a challenge mm. but as a matter of fact uh, government uh, still getting uh, loans domestically, also a big challenge mm. to the growth of the SMEs. And then when you look at the SMEs and reports that come out from uh, the world of the SMEs is that most of them, for example, the small startups mm. don't leave to celebrate their first anniversary. So when you look at the okay. saving, it takes us to the saving culture, some of them always uh, run out of the business process mm. at mm. just the start of everything. And uh, when you look at saving, saving is very important for all of us. But, I, I uh, do believe everyone does save. Yeah, but Paul, sorry to interject there. Before we head to saving, the reason as to why, you know, you said about the bank processes of going to get a, a collateral because they're going to ask a lot when you're going to get the loan. Mm -hmm. But also, we, most majority of the business has for survival. Like, if I'm, I'm a defaulter, 
I may not come to Sonko, I mean to uh, clear Sonko, I may want money from you. And then you're asking me what, uh, or Simba watch, a security. I know myself, I know I'm not going to meet it. What do I do? I have to run away. Like I have to not come back because I know Wogende was Sonko, Sonko is always, you know, asking for something to put there. But when uh, there is nothing or uh, it tends to be, you know, an agreement, a mutual agreement between the business, that is why you see them running actually to micro microfinancing, you know, support centers and microfinancing systems that at least at some point they're going to give in the income and the understanding or the agreements they tend to be mutual and uh, at least supportive for their businesses so for me if the banks could really at some point but anyway they cannot because uh, this is a system whereby uh, it will in turn impact the economic you know recover and revenue I mean if the bank just gives funds just far like that we're not going to get really a revamped economy so so far so good how we're going now it's upon the SMEs to get your hands on and at least on a daily basis know what security you're always going to be giving into the bank at least to get some money. Mm -hmm. But speaking of how they can easily save, mm -hmm. also takes us back to the financial discipline like you did mention, mm -hmm. that some of us are financially disciplined. Mm -hmm. We tend to utilize even the money we are supposed to save. At a time when, uh, like uh, Patrick Vittoria says, that some people tend to use the money for luxury. Um, also, the young SMEs or the, those in their youthful stage mm. tend to use every single penny that they make out of the business for luxury. And yet they forget that there is also money that is supposed to be input back into the business. So you're supposed to help your business grow. And the only way to help your business grow is to get money, put it back into the business, and then serve a little or you can actually utilize a little. So saving, uh, most people actually save for luxury. That mm. is also another bigger challenge. And uh, that someone saves money. How can you even save for luxury? Only To just for, make some other people happy. To make other people happy or to make themselves happy. Uh, it is also very important to make the body happy or anything happy. Mm. But sometimes we overdo it. Or we twe one year overdose in luxury. And then we tend to utilize a lot of money. Mm. Just trying to build on uh, what we call but again, you if you look at uh, maybe SMEs, because we're still speaking about the micro enterprises, that is um, applying up at least uh, around four people in the annual sales revenue turnover, at least a total of not exceeding around 10 million shillings. So if you have, uh, you're employing at least four people in your business, three, two to four people, and then your annual turnover, the money you make annually is not exceeding 10 million shillings. That is uh, a micro enterprise. That is a small enterprise. And also, uh, on the other hand, the small enterprises employing between, um, that is a micro, but a small enterprise employs between four, uh, five people to 49 and have got an asset between 10 million. Assets in your bugaga intangible you know they are not in, uh, intangible at least at 10 million but not exceeding 100 million so ying is that 10 million na ye you're not exceeding to it 100 million at least annually <coughs> there you are bound to be a small enterprise a micro i said earlier and we have now big enterprises we are not talking about the big enterprises so if you're in that category we're speaking about listen and maybe you can have a feedback to us as well but we are also urging here that how do you spend your time mm -hmm. as an sme <coughs> as an enterprising person how do you spend your time? How do you think an SME, because I, I mean, sometimes they are busy. Mm -hmm. How do you think they could spend your time? Maybe we could save someone at least for saving culture. How would you advise for them to spend their time to be luxury at some point? Their limitation, what should it be? I only think the only problem they have is your being self-employed. Mm -hmm. It is, uh, let me say, a problem and a solution. It is a problem and at the end of the day, very good <laughs> for, for them. Mm. One, why is it a problem? When you're self-employed, you tend to run life according to the way you want. You are, at, appear at your workplace at any time. Because you're self-employed, you can open your shop at around 1 p.m. If I told you are uh, in a bar in the night and you woke up at around 10, you're like, oh, I can't say 
you go to your workplace at um, noon. So <coughs> that is when they lack the, in this, uh, that discipline. And in most cases, when you're employed, you're supposed to reach work at a certain time or at a given time. Mm. Because you know if at all you don't, you will be laid off or you will be you fired. Will be held so accountable. when you look at uh, most of the situations that are happening with uh, the SMEs, most of them believe that, hey, I pay myself. Why would I need to rush? So because they know they pay themselves, they know how much they make, which is a very big one. Mm. Uh, so it goes back to, like I said, the discipline. Okay, they being need to disciplined. Exercise, yes, that discipline when it comes to their finances. Okay, but also show me how do you, <clears throat> how are you meant or how are you going to be spending or spending because we have expenditure and saving. You spend, uh, you either spend or income comes in. So how are you going to be balancing the two? Mm. We have got daily sales. You're making daily sales. Uh, the major important lookouts here are your sales. Maybe they could be daily or monthly. I do not know really the business you're handling. And then we have got a stock. That means you have to stock it back again. You have to uh, do business again. That could be. Others, you do it daily basis. Others, weekly. You get new stocks weekly. Others, maybe monthly or even a year. But a year, really. Mm -hmm. I do not think you have got a business. If you are an s and &E, that would take you a year and then you do restock again. So we're looking at monthly stock, uh, weekly, and also in a daily basis. Mm -hmm. And you have got expenditure that is, that means you have to pay off some people. For example, we have people who have a situla luggage, luggage carriers around town. For example, uh, we have got people who are going to um, extend your marketing grade. That means that you're going to pay someone on a daily basis. For example, if you go to a shop, we have seen people selling water on the street. They get that water actually or sodas from a certain a wholesaler or uh, shop really. You've got to pay people on a daily basis, maybe weekly or monthly. That is the expenditure. But you have also had to consider yourself, how you're going to be uh, spending on yourself. That means you, because you don't have a uh, uh, a stove around town that is on a rare basis so probably you're going to have lunch to spend on lunch you're going to spend on a breakfast if you want or even you're going to spend an evening uh, maybe something on an evening away from that if you are in town uh, working around town you're going to have to spend on um, going going to ease yourself for mm. short calls, long calls, they are expenses. paid for. So you consider your expenses, calculate them, know when am I going to be paying this, know at what time am I going to be spending, at what time am I going to be stocking, so that it gives you a break. Again, it goes back to planning. So when Sonko, you know that uh, next week or uh, maybe two days later, I'm going to be paying Rita a certain amount of money, you will have to find all means to make some money because you have got to uh, achieve something at the end of the day, mm -hmm. know what you're going to take at home. Again, you have to know what your take home is on a daily basis, mm -hmm. on weekly, whatever what, how many means you're going to get it, I don't know. Sometimes uh, people in business actually are bound to take home. Now, manya today, every day I have to make a profit of 10,000. But 10,000, it happens once that ofunyeo kasambu. How about the 3,000? Where are you going to get it? So here is the deal. You also have, I know, because there are multiple savings people have. Here we're talking about small and medium enterprises. That means they're going to be, they have at least multiple, ideally, some activities that are meant to bring income. Mm -hmm. You're going to have to borrow that 3,000 from maybe a school fees pocket replace it for today's sales. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, your calculation will fail. That's what I'm going to give you from mm -hmm. me. You borrow it from another income because you know tomorrow you make it harder to borrow so that you make more profits. Mm -hmm. That's for me on how you're going to pick up your savings. And it uh, becomes uh, very difficult if at all you don't discipline yourself financially. I'm trying to discipline <laughs> myself when it comes to the saving. So, uh, so should you as well a view of uh, SMB. Very well, that takes us to a break. We do return. <laughs> 